Good morning once again and uh, welcome to the program here we talk about climate change and what exactly is happening on the ground and once again I do have with me my brother in the studio that is Joshua Wright. Good morning bro. Good morning bro. <laughs> yeah and it's us again uh, as we meet just a few days after a very important case had to be delayed once again we're talking about the phosphate marine marine phosphate mining it's one issue that has been uh, at the heart of Namibia's conscience I think for the past few months and uh, we experienced the delay once again and uh, we are meeting here we know that in a few days time you, sh you should be either in the US of A or UK uh, on, uh, on your uh, one of those uh, events where you have to go and do some filming but uh, climate change let's talk about action well, uh, today, um, the topic that I'm uh, looking to discuss is sort of a topic that you approach with a very heavy heart. And that's that um, over the past 30 years, we've known what's coming. Right. We've known exactly the direction that we're headed. And for the past 30 years, emissions have risen by 60%. Right. And we failed. We have, we have um, incontrovertibly failed um, through the governing process to take care of climate change through the business process, through advocacy. You know, um, eventually you can, you can deliver a petition so many times and the government will, is still not listening. They just sit on you. Know. And, and I've seen it because too many times you guys have been picketing in front of parliament and until now, is there anything that has come out of the parliament of the government of the Republic of Namibia, out of the uh, petitions that you guys have been putting through? No, they come out with very uh, big smiles and then they do the same old, same old. Uh, and that's unfortunately true worldwide, and that's the thing, is that we are, climate change is here, Australia is on fire, and by our inaction we are tacitly endorsing um, the death of billions by mid-century. Right. You know, the, the burning of forests, the, the genocide of some groups, because, you know, when there isn't water and there isn't food, right. th that means war, and people really need to start looking at what climate change actually will be. Climate change isn't just, you know, getting hotter, Right. it means disaster and unfortunately um but if, the, if you look at if you look right, at uh, yeah. davos yeah uh the world leaders are listening are like having the token climate activists there but they aren't actually doing anything about it uh so we're sort of in a really uh, unfortunate situation where governments aren't acting and you have to ask yourself so when government isn't acting what do we do and i think that that means that we have to take action and we have to be we have to have the courage of our convictions to take action because nobody else is. But is it possible to uh, have an impactful action, to take any impactful, any impactful action that has got practical results when you do have your government lagging behind? Is, is it possible? Or are you talking about something that's more heightened, something that's more hyper, that uh, makes government uh, come on the negotiating table? Uh, we, have seen, we, have, we, have, we have experienced a lot of wars in our history, right? And uh, we have seen uh, situations which have brought governments together, diplomatic forces coming together to compromise. Is it possible, especially on the, on, when you're fighting the battle uh, on, on, on climate change? Well, we know how change happens. Change right. happens when people start being brave and putting their bodies and their livelihoods on the line. You know, uh, in, in um, the U.S., P um, African Americans got the right to vote because of civil disobedience, because they they weren't going to let them be, they, they weren't going to give up. They weren't going to let the government dictate their lives. You know, that's how apartheid ended. That's, that's how um, India gained independence. And at this point, that's how we're going to have to save the world. Uh, so we actually really do need to use the courage of our convictions to actually go out and risk ourselves because until we do that, governments really aren't going to listen. Uh, for instance, a few years ago, um, I was on Vancouver Island, which is near Washington State, Right. Uh, and I was in this old growth forest, this beautiful old growth forest with trees that were literally a thousand years old. Trees as big as this room, twice as big as this room even. And I was up there, and I, th they built a logging road up into it. Right. And I was, I was uh, 15 years old, I think, 15, 14, and I was sitting on that logging road, and I was realizing, what if I, you know, tied myself to the trees? What if... I didn't let them cut them down. You know, no matter what the government said, what if I stayed on that spot and just didn't let didn't let them do it? Right. If I had done that, maybe that clear cut wouldn't be there anymore. Um, but today, that entire stand has been clear cut because I didn't have the bravery to do that. And I think that that is really what we need to be looking at. We need to be looking at going to the places we love, going to the places that are being exploited, and simply going on the ground and just stopping it. We don't need to have permission because Ultimately, the future is more ours than it is 
the governments, and it does the future doesn't belong to corporations; it belongs to us. But when you look on the side of the of the lobbyists, the the activists, have they really been doing enough when it comes to uh, lobbying? I mean, uh, for more action as far as fighting climate change is concerned. Have we really seen? Uh, you have had your experience here in Namibia for the few months that you've been here. Uh, did you see that level of dedication? I think that the thing we don't um, need more of is lobbying because you know you can lobby the government all day long except if the government is um, in the pocket of industry or if the government cares more about get winning the next election than about saving the planet um, that's not going to work so what we really need to do is is we need to think about how what what kind of future we are looking at and right now it's more of a crime to do nothing than it is to break the law and you know to occupy a tree because at this point by not doing anything we are basically endorsing the death of our planet and that is the ultimate crime. Uh, so I'm really, t I, this message will only be received by maybe a few percent of people out there. And those are the people that s stay up at night uh, terrified to see what the future is going to look like. The people that are sort of on the, on the sidelines watching as, as the world burns, as right. trees right. fall, right. and who really want to do something. And to those people I would say that we need you to be brave and we need you to act. And do you see young people doing more research on climate change? I mean, like sitting on the desktop and, and trying, wanting to read climate change related literature and going right there in the field trying to interact with nature and see what exactly is going on. Or it's uh, let's organize, let's go and demonstrate, we catch up, we meet up in town and then we go demonstrate. But I don't even have an idea about the statistics about what's going on. Where Do yeah. you see that happening? I think people really do care and I think the demonstrating is a way for people to feel like they're doing something. But ultimately, if nothing comes out of the demonstration, then is there really a point? You know, we, you can demonstrate, we can demonstrate and demonstrate and demonstrate, but ultimately, if the World Economic Forum is still pushing oil, and if uh, COP25 is still not doing anything, then, then all that protest amounts to nothing. So what we really need to do is um, start making it really inconvenient not to, not to act. You know, Extinction Rebellion in London has shut down London, and it's, it's super controversial up there, right. but they, they've, shut, they've shut down London in a few cases, They've uh, spray painted universities um, uh, with with blood of future generations because they want them to divest from fossil fuels. And guess what? It's working. You know, the the most radical actions are the actions that actually get a response because otherwise the government can too easily say, you know, let them protest in their little corner and we'll let them protest during this day. We'll have we'll give them Fifth Avenue and they can protest on Fifth Avenue for this day. And then tomorrow we're just going to go back to strip trading stocks. It can't be like that because it has been like that. And in the past thirty years. Emissions have risen sixty uh, percent, and at this point, uh, we're having the hottest years on record every other year. We're having the highest emissions on record. We have not hit peak emissions, and all of the all of the actions the governments are proposing are essentially more of budgeting actions in terms of messing around with the numbers so it makes it look like we're being right, carbon exactly. neutral, even though we aren't. You know, we have a declining carbon budget. It's probably below. Um, 300, uh, 300 billion parts, um, gigatons of carbon dioxide that we can emit, and we are rapidly diminishing that budget. And and uh, if you look at Pinja, I mean, uh, all the way from uh, last year towards the towards December last year, uh, we saw. I, I think Pinja has had its fair share of demonstrations. Most importantly, around the issue of phosphate mining. I think you you've been following the news. And uh, last week, uh, the the case was supposed to be appearing in court. It did appear in court, and then it was delayed. I mean, for the upteenth time. Uh, let's look at the mobilization part of of, of of it. I think we saw demonstrations in uh, in Vovis Bay, and uh, the anger that filtered through. Uh, looking at uh, the fact that we do have a company that wants to uh, proceed with the project, the case is in court right now. What's your, what's your observation and what's your uh, assessment as far as this project is concerned and the reaction that has come from the Namibians? Can you say that Namibians, the people, are not ready for this? Oh, well, I think very rightly they are uh, angered by uh, deep deep ocean mining, and I think that on top of all the other concerns that are the oceans are facing, ocean acidification, ocean warming, a lack of oxygen in the oceans. Uh, the bleaching of coral reefs, the disappearance of 90% of large uh, fish in the past 40 years. On top of all those issues, we really do not be, need to be adding marine mining to, the, to, to that list. Uh, and unfortunately, especially uh, in the renewable sector, um, renewables do require a lot of rare earth minerals, and they're turning to the ocean floors to get those. In the case of this, uh, they want phosphate to, for agriculture, 
And instead of this perpetual agenda of resource exploitation in an age where the environment is already collapsing, it's already, we're already in really hot water when it comes to uh, the environment, we cannot be opening new mines, especially in the ocean, which is so battered by climate change, overfishing, and all the other issues facing it. So I think that the Namibian people are rightly angered by this, and I think that ultimately people should stand up for, for their ocean and for their coastline. Um, and not allow it to be mined, and I think that, you know... Is it, more, is it morally justifiable? Is it morally justifiable to say that uh, you cannot stand in the way of this project because you're going to be creating so many jobs? No. You know, there are a lot of things that create jobs. Prisons create jobs. Doesn't mean it's good to put people away for no reason. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not morally justifiable, because at this point, exploitation of the planet, further exploitation of the planet, further emissions, it is literally heading us towards a scenario where there will be wars across the world for resources, there will be uh, genocide, because that's what cultural breakdown looks like. There will be um, massive, massive uh, income inequality as there already is, um, which will just make that all those issues worse, and there will be environmental collapse, ecosystems will collapse. Um, many of the forests that we know and love, the Amazon rainforest might turn into a savanna. You know, we are facing absolute environmental breakdown, so anybody um, it, attempting to further exploit the earth has no moral h high ground to stand on at all. Right, and, and uh, you, you've pretty much traveled right around the world, and I, I just want to find out from you, from the countries that you've been in, has this, are they carrying out projects like this? Every single place I've been, they're opening a new mine, logging a new forest. Uh, but talking about marine fossil mining, like getting into the ocean and the sea itself, yeah. is this happening all day? Oh, it is. It's happening. Um, you know, Nauru is like is a great case study. It's a nation that was that's a tiny little atoll in the <laughs> Pacific Ocean, <laughs> and they started phosphate mining on the land. Um, and now they live on a little strip of land around the edge of the island because the center of it is just a big barren wasteland. And as the seas rise, they're going to be pushed inland, and they don't really have anywhere to go because they mined out their future. Right. And now what they are turning to is they are investing in ocean floor mining. It's right. sort of, it's sort of, um, fool me once, shame on me, fool me t twice, shame on you. And that's, that's sort of the, that's sort of the situation there where they, they, um, kind of destroyed their future on land and now they're going to go do it to the oceans again because that they, they destroyed their, the, the, the opportunity for agricultural land, for tourism, um, and now they're about to do it for their own fisheries. What's your appeal to the judges who are handling this case, right? We do have judge, High Court Judge Harold Gaya who's handling this case right here in Namibia and uh, he has asked it for more scientific evidence, for scientific evidence to be put before court. What's your appeal to the judge? My appeal would be to to take the moral high ground. Even if the laws say you can do this, that is an excuse for doing it because ultimately it will harm it will harm our my generation and any any future generations and it will further it, it would be like a punch in the gut to a dying man in terms of just mining the floor of the ocean when the ocean is already looking to be fishless by 2048, when it's already looking like um, the ocean, like reefs will go extinct within the next 20 or 30 years. I would say do the right thing and and try to reverse this trend. Don't try to make it worse. Right, let's look into the crystal ball, 2020, 2021, 2022. As far as action is concerned, do you see the heightening of effort towards trying to um, combat climate change? Do you see that? What, what's the message from the protesters? Well, I think that in the past few years, people have protested, and apart from direct action, none of it has actually made any tangible difference. And I think that what we need is more of Extinction Rebellion type actions that force governments to, to take action right now. Uh, so 2021, 2022, 2023, 24, 25, these are crucial years because if in five years we are at the same place that we are today, there is absolutely no way we will, we will um, get away with even modest climate change, because we already know that climate change is here. We know that it's going to get a lot worse, and we are still heading down that path. So what we need to do is try to avoid total annihilation of ourselves and our planet at this right, point. Right. It's sort of, um, we're in a tough situation no matter what, and that is super depressing, but it's ultimately true, and we have to face that fact, and then from there we have to try to save what we can. Maybe we can save a few species, we can save a few, a few ecosystems, and we can save as many people as we can. But right now, we're headed on a path to war, um, famine, collapse. You know, the, the world could quite literally look like Venus. Mm. 
um, in a few hundred years. Worse than the asteroid that hit, that hit the Earth and killed, out, killed the dinosaur. That, that's what we're looking at right now. And people need to wake up, and then they need to realize that they have power, and they need to be brave enough to use that power to force their governments to actually um, take this issue extremely seriously, more seriously than anything else, because it is ultimately deadly if we do not. Right, that's what we're talking about here on Eagle FM on the early morning scoop. We are talking about uh, the issue of climate change and uh, talking about what action governments and people need to take in their various jurisdictions to try to make sure that they contribute uh, to the reduction of the carbon footprint in the ozone layer. And uh, Joshua, we do appreciate the time that you've always been giving us to talk about this issue and uh, allowing us to get into your wisdom uh, and, 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 and understanding what's happening. Uh, on the ground but before we close up maybe our listeners would really want to, ch to, to find out from you uh, have you been checking out like uh, whether Australia is recovering uh, what's happening on the Amazon side because uh, uh, when when the news broke out you know it just was in the face of everybody that, oh it's burning in Australia oh the Amazons are burning what is the latest is there some recovery that's coming around not really uh, right now the Australia is still on fire the worst is yet to come uh, and the Amazon rainforest is it's not burning right now mm. all, um, at, to the degree that it was previously um, But ultimately there are no good news stories at this point because you know everything is getting it's either staying the same or it's mm. getting worse Nothing's been getting better for a while and we need to be reversing that trend and one of the ways you can do that is if somebody is For instance if you're a First Nation group in the Amazon and somebody has come to burn your forest down because they want to build a soy plantation right. um, to feed to you know cows and chickens and goats you know, what you can do from there is you can stop them with your bodies, risk your lives, because ultimately, the government isn't doing it for us right now. Um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that. Right, and uh, as you leave, uh, you just left just uh, uh, roughly six days, seven days to go, uh, and uh, we'll hopefully be getting you back sometime in May. What is the final way that you have for the Namibian climate uh, change activist for the Namibian government? Become activated. I know I'm, I'm speaking to only a few a few people out there who are up at night worrying about the effects of climate change, but ultimately, we have not been winning. We are in fact losing right now. It is a it's 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 not a fun thing to hear, but it is the truth. And you need to start actually taking action and and taking steps um, that will impact you and will impact other people because that's that's the only option we have. Um, you need to have courage to actually stand up for what you believe in and actually make an impact rather than trying to fit um, a quick protest into your daily schedule because unfortunately the government ignores quick protests. They right. need they need more pressure. They need hunger strikes. They need people. Sit -ins. On, yeah, they need sit-ins. They need they need people really forcing them to to, to, to come to the table on this in a way. Uh, yeah, such a level of demonstration we had to get it here as far as climate change right. is concerned. Sit yeah. ins and people coming in parliament. Gardens, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, this is the discussion that we are having here, and we hope that you can sustain it. And uh, feel free to give us a call, and uh, we can always uh, uh, entertain your views on yeah. what you think about what's happening with Namibia as far as climate change is concerned. But before we close up, I will give this opportunity to you, uh, Joshua. Yeah. Final word. So uh, from here, I'm, I'm going to be going to London to actually film with Extinction Rebellion and with the people that are um, putting their lives on the line from a documentary, um, which is currently titled Rogue. Uh, you can find it at facebook.com slash rogue documentary and then you can follow my travel and stuff on Instagram at uh, Joshua Wright Film and universalwildlands.com is where the film is hosted and we're hoping to show that in Sundance uh, next year. That's right. There you have it, Joshua Wright. It is W-R-I-G-H-T. Right, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that it is, you yes. to his Instagram account. Okay, that is, that is it from us and uh, until we meet again, do we have a productive remainder of the day.